Okay, you guys had questions and I am here to answer. I went to the social medias and the subscribers on YouTube and I asked, what do you guys wanna know um, as far as like homemaking, motherhood, large family life, homeschooling, faith, like what is it? Ask and I will answer. And so here I am doing this video now. So let's go ahead, grab whatever you're sipping on. I've got some ice water in my like knockoff Stanley cup because I am one of those moms. And let's go ahead and get into these questions. Okay, so first up, how do you manage your time with uh, a large family, a mom of seven? And I would say that though I, I plan a lot and I think, so I heard this a while back and it's um, planning or failing to plan is a plan to fail. And I feel that to my core because I am somebody who I really thought that I was like a go with the flow like I can just do, like as it comes um I'll just deal with it and and when they're hungry I'll feed them and all of that kind of stuff but the amount of like stress and overwhelm that that would create not knowing what was expected not knowing what was happening and then you have like the question 500 days or 500 times a day of like what's for dinner? What are we doing? What are this? And it just got to be too much for me. And so when I had my third, actually, I think this is when this happened, I realized I am not so much a go with the flow mom. I need to have structure. The kids need to have structure. And I have found over the last, I think like 10 years, um, it turns out I actually am somebody who really loves structure. I love a plan. I love knowing what's coming next. Um, I, I like to, the kids to be able to know what's coming up next so they don't have to ask me 500 questions a day. And so some of the things that I have done to manage my time better because as a mom of seven, you can imagine uh, there's a lot of people vying for your attention and your time. And so you have to be strategic about how you do that. So some of the ways that I manage my time is I will prep for the next day the night before like I will prep that night for the following day if that makes sense so I will pick out my outfit whatever I need if I'm like making a video I'll pick out that outfit if I'm gonna be working out I'll pick that outfit out too so I have it all together and it'll save me just like brain time fatigue stress like all of that just like having what I need I will also give a look over to my um, planner and that's another way that I use like to, to, to manage my time is my planner but I'll look over my planner to see what's coming up the next day see what I need to be doing what's going to be happening that kind of stuff um I also prep my coffee uh just to make it a lot easier I have like one of those old school coffee pots and so those are the things that I do the night before the day of things that I use um uh, to manage my time is my planner like I had mentioned um I make sure that I get up about two hours like hour and a half two hours before the kiddos get awake um wake up sorry so that I can have like drink my coffee and quiet and do my Bible time and quiet because I just prefer a quiet atmosphere for the Bible time. I can do it when the kids are up. I just don't really like it. Um, and I feel like I'm not giving it my best. So I do that before they wake up and then um, any kind of work, any like if I'm doing videos, I need to edit anything like that. I will also do in that times so, like any kind of like computer work or anything like that. And then that way I have, like the kids have my full attention, the house has my full attention, whatever needs to get done has my full attention. When I'm uh, not worrying about how I'm gonna get these things done, I'll also get started on laundry, um, like first thing I, like when I wake up. So those are some things I do. Like I said, I use my planner. I have different systems and routines that I use to make sure that I'm staying on track. Um, and then I think, oh, and timers. Like I use timers to help me keep track of my time, help manage the time because I want to be a good steward of my time. I want to make sure that I'm not getting distracted or not, um, like I'm taking too long to do something that I know it doesn't take me that long. Um, and so those are some of the ways that I manage my home and family of seven. What are your top tips for feeding a large family on a budget? I am a huge fan of a meal plan. I think one of the um, most substantial ways that I save money is by planning out my meals and then taking what I need, like putting, you know, making a grocery list um, for exactly what I need. And then that way I'm shopping off my list and I'm not just kind of like grabbing things. I'm more prepared. I'm able to kind of plan meals to make sure that I'm using 
um, similar ingredients because as if, you know, like, yes, we're a large family and buying bulk, it just makes more sense for us. Um, but it wasn't always that way. What I found though is buying in bulk is a lot cheaper. And so I will make recipes, let's say I'm making like, um, something with chicken thighs. I will get, and I will make two or three meals and then I'll buy like a bulk pack of chicken thighs. So that way I am spending less money on the chicken thighs and, I'm able to like stretch it out. I will also use beans, rice, and potatoes because those are very universal ingredients that you can put in a lot of different recipes, do a lot of different ways, and they're super cheap. Um, what other things do I do? I think those are like the biggest things that I do is buy in bulk and then like break that up or using like, you know, and so one of the things I realized like produce wise, right? Like you buy a bunch of cilantro because you're gonna have tacos or we have this soup that we absolutely love it's a white bean chicken chili taco soup which is n like basically two soups i formed into one and added some things into and it's absolutely delicious it's one of our family favorites and um we probably have it like once a week once every other week uh, and i like to use cilantro to have a little flavoring to it like garnish it with it um but I'm not gonna use a whole bunch. Like we have a large family of nine, but we're not gonna use that much cilantro. And so what I'll do is I'll make another recipe or two that will also use cilantro, whether it's a garnish or um, like the cilantro lime chicken I make, I'll use that because that uses like a good amount of cilantro. Um, and that's another way that I'll like cut down the cost on things. Um, and then of course like shopping deals, um getting things when they're on sale so like giving a like doing a once over before you meal plan and see what's on sale um uh where to go for it because sometimes it'll mean like me going to multiple stores another thing that i use is like the ibotta app because that's another way you can save money like through the coupons and rebates and stuff and so those are the things that i do to help cut back on costs especially in this time like groceries are expensive and so i'm just i just try to be as strategic as possible when planning meals making sure that i'm only getting the ingredients i need like i leave a little leeway in our budget for like special things um like we'll do movie nights and so like popcorn candy chips soda like those kind of things like i'll leave wiggle room in our budget for those things but for the most part i'm just buying what we need um and it will it just helps um on the grocery cost just plan <laughs> i think that that is the best way for me to stick to my budget and feed a large family on a budget um and you know we're we're constantly trying to with the grocery prices like constantly going up we're always trying to figure out new ways to save um and i would also say like ditching meat or at least like high quality meats and using like ground meat um or like i use a lot of ground meat i use a lot of chicken thighs um or i'll buy like a big like pork shoulder which is going to be a lot cheaper cook it and then like separate it into multiple recipes because that's another way to which is i guess just more of like bulk um so those are the ways that i use to manage our budget like our food budget how do you manage your faith or how do you maintain your faith while being a busy mom and um i think <laughs> I think that being a busy mom um, actually strengthens my faith. I think that I am, obviously I'm intentional. So I am intentional about my time, like reading um, the Bible, praying. Um, we have a Bible time with the kids that we do uh, as a part of our like morning school routine. Um, and so there's things that we strategically do to make sure that I am staying in the word and we're praying and I'm teaching the kids and all that kind of stuff. So I don't I don't really know what it means by how do you maintain your faith um, while busy be, but while being a busy mom. And I, I would I'm assuming that that's what the question is is like how do you stay connected in your faith while being so busy? And I am just intentional. I make sure to make time for it. Um, there was a time. There's been seasons where like I when I first was saved, what I would do is when the kids would go to bed. Um, I had two at the time when they would go to bed. That's when I would do like my devotionals, my Bible reading, my prayer and stuff like that. And I realized that I was either falling asleep. I, it was just like I wasn't giving my best. And I realized that 
that and it was a really hard thing because I am not a morning person. I've had to transition and train myself to be a morning person because it's not something that comes easy. And so I went from doing it at night because I felt like it wasn't my best foot forward. Like it was, I wasn't giving God my best. Um, it was giving him like the remaining bit that I had at the end of the day. Um, and so I switched over to doing it in the morning and there was it I feel like there's always like in different seasons it's different times when I have like a nursing baby then I can do it in the middle of the night if I'm filling up to it or I I'm like having a hard time falling back to sleep that's when I'll like read my bible or I spend t a lot of time in prayer then especially because you're just like hanging on by a thread right and so um I think that having kids actually strengthens my faith because I'm getting challenged and um I'm I'm getting stretched um very much so uh raising kiddos and homeschooling and and managing a home while raising kids and it's just a lot of work um and a lot goes into it and there's a lot of challenges and trials and just you know it's just hard and so I think that that's how I've maintained my faith and I hope this answers your question. That's what's coming to mind um, hearing the question, but I'm not really sure. So if you ask this question and I am not being very clear, go ahead down in the comments and then ask like a clarifying question. And that goes for any of these questions. If anybody has like any clarifying questions or more specifics or anything like that that you wanna know, let me know down in the comments. If this is giving you any value so far, go ahead and hit the like button and then let's get into question number four. Okay, so for question number four, it is what are your favorite quick and easy meals for busy days? I am somebody who loves um, freezer meals. I have a freezer meal cookbook. If you're interested, I'll leave it down in the link so that you can check that out. It's 30 freezer meals, which do not have to be freezer meals. They can just be easy, quick meals that you can pop into your Instapot or in, in a pot in the oven or, I mean, on the stove or put in the oven. There's like multiple different recipes, so you can kind of like work your way through. And so, as you can tell, I'm very passionate about freezer meal because I feel like I'm able to provide nutritious um good meals that warm my kids bellies um that are like favorites whatever in a more strategic way it's not that they're like i i know that one of the biggest complaints about uh like instant pot meals or crock pot meals is that the, like they're like soggy or they're not as flavorful or um they're just not as good and i don't that's not my jam that and so I have created these recipes to be quick and easy, to be put, to be budget friendly, um, and to provide like nutritious, good meals, but like with little effort or time. And so, like mentioned before, um, the white bean chicken chili taco soup, one of our favorite things. It actually is super easy in the Instapot. I will just like cook the chicken with um, some chicken broth and some of the green salsa that we use. And then after that's done, shred it all up, dump everything in, let it warm, uh, like let everything warm up. Um, and I prep the beans ahead of time too. But I let it all warm up and then um, it's good to go. I have a huge pot of, of soup and it took me very little time Time because I'm not sitting there like babysitting a pot or something in the oven. I know exactly what it's going to be. I can just throw it together. Um, it's an easy recipe, right? Um, with the freezer meals, you just have to like in your planner or on um, a whiteboard on a piece of paper. Like it really doesn't have to be anything special or fancy. It can literally just be like a post-it, which I love post-its. But you can just write what meals for what days you're gonna do. Make sure to pull it out because you're being mindful like what's happening the next day or what needs to go. So you see it on the morning list of like, oh, I need to pull this out of the freezer. You'll put it in the sink to defrost during the day, pop it in during dinner time, and it's so easy. I mean, you can also just cook it frozen. So there's been plenty of times, like I think I just shared um, a, a video where I was cooking meatball or cooking meatballs for meatball subs. And I literally just put them in frozen into the Instapot with a little beef broth because it needs liquid to like steam for like 10 minutes and they were done and they were so good. I added a little bit of sauce, um, like extra sauce in there to make it just extra yummy with some provolone cheese, put it on a bun. And like that, it took me maybe 15 minutes to do everything uh, and wait for it to cook. And it was it was just like easy, but it's so good. So um, I would say freezer meals 
uh, can be done in a very like delicious and easy way. Um, some favorite meals I would have to say are the white bean chicken chili soup, like I said. Um, some other go-tos, anything with meatballs, like frozen meatballs, they're like so easy, you just buy a bag of meatballs, you can put different, like I've done teriyaki meatballs, I've done um, the meatball subs, you can put it in pasta, you can put it in a white sauce, like there's so many different ways you can do um, meatballs, so that's probably one way that I do that. Um, also like any kind of soup really, like uh, my family loves like a tomato soup and grilled cheese, sometimes I will like, you know, spice it up a little bit or like make it a little bit nicer and I'll use like baguette or French bread um, and kind of just like butter it with like some cheese and make it like toasty in the oven and you can just dip it. I mean, you could also just buy like frozen garlic bread slices um, from the store, bake that and use it, super easy meal. Um, what are some other go-tos? Anything with like rice, that's a quick and easy thing that we can do, like some teriyaki chicken. Um, I'm like trying to rack my brain. Um, I have like, we have so many favorites, but I would say like on a busy night, the quickest and easiest thing is probably a soup. Um, I will also do like sliders, um, like sandwiches, like the Hawaiian bun sliders. We, so they're supposed to be like ham, ham and Swiss and poppy seed. But let me just tell you, if you want a little like you want to take them up a notch use everything bagel seasoning instead of poppy seeds which poppy seeds are still in there but they are extra good on those hawaiian rolls like super good super easy meal um or maybe we might do like chili dogs and like some tater tots and like a veggie or something like a salad those are my some of my favorite like easy meals for busy nights but i really do lean towards like freezer meals so that they are quick and easy so i can make something like a cilantro chicken with rice and veggies or a salad or whatever um in a very quick and easy way for those busy nights it's just about planning and preparing so number five is how do you handle homeschooling so i would say <laughs> day by day I would probably say I handled homeschool day by day I have learned over the years that um it's not the same all the time like every year it's different every season it's different um we cut we kind of have like three seasons of homeschool um in the beginning of the year we're like all excited for the new curriculum we're wanting to spend long days um doing it and and then it gets into like the fall winter where it's cooler and it's just cozy to like read and and do projects and stuff like that and then you start like tapering off um around the holidays and like the new year you kind of get like spiked back up and then you start coming down at the end of the school year and we kind of do a little bit in the summertime but um since moving to Idaho we don't really do too much we kind of like just soak up the summer for all that it's worth um but reading is a regular thing language arts we do every day uh math we do every day our morning time like our our bible time and our morning basket is something we do every day um or try to get done every single day and then we kind of alternate between science and history um we do that as a family in group um like in a group setting and so we kind of like alternate or we might have a project or something that takes a little more time and so we might spend a little bit more time in that and then any like extracurricular activities um well it's not really extracurricular but like typing language all of that like those are their individual lessons and so we kind of just take that as we go but that's how we homeschool we also don't do a lot of it in the morning because it's like my kids are slow to warm up during the day and so if I force them to get into lessons right away it's kind of like overwhelming and we tend to hit more like walls um but heads a little bit more it's a little bit more difficult so we'll usually kind of have like a slow breakfast maybe uh just kind of like relax play watch a little cartoons or something and then we'll get into like a cleanup and we'll do our morning time and then we kind of go into individual lessons after that independent lessons after that uh take a break around lunchtime, and the littles will take a nap and then we kind of finish up like group science or or history or something that we have to do to get together. Um, or what else do we do? I think that's all. Um, but that's kind of I just I really just take it day by day. I don't like um, I am somebody who likes to plan. So I do plan things out. I um, 
do as much as we can but I have learned in homeschool it's just a little different um you don't have to like do things in traditional ways and that's part of the beauty of it and so I think just homeschool is just something that like ebbs and flows like there's times and there's days where we're like we're going hard we're like going to we're doing school until three or four o'clock uh like right before dinner um there are days where we're literally doing school until dinner because it's just not been a good day and kids are not really wanting to do things and then there's days where we're done by like noon or one and so it just kind of depends it ebbs and flows it's like a fun little homeschool roller coaster we just get to figure out every day um but i hope that I hope that answers your question. Okay, number six is what are your top tips for keeping your home clean and organized? Uh, again, I am somebody who likes to have systems and routines in place. Like I like to have structure with things. So um, I have a laundry routine every day of the week has something that's getting, like there's a specific laundry that's getting done that day. Of course, if there's like accidents or things happen, um, laundry needs to get washed, then by all means, like we'll get it in there. Some days I will only have a load or two. Um, and then some days I might have like three or four, depending on like what is going on. So, um, that's part of it. Laundry routines. I have, um, Cleaning schedules, so every day I have something that I'm focusing on besides just like the everyday things, right? So our living room, dining room, kitchen, homeschool room is something that's getting dirty every single day. That's like the main floor. Uh, it gets messy. We're having to clean it up multiple times a day. So I am like doing the pickups involving my kids in it because that really helps too. Um, having them have some like... Um, responsibilities things that they're responsible to do and then um I have my things like the regular so like this office my bedroom my bathroom kids bathroom um different areas around the house I will have a specific day to focus on that so I might not get it all done at one go and I'll just break it up and kind of work through it um in 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 the slots of time that I have in the day besides like the regular you know cooking cleaning kids homeschool kind of stuff if that makes sense so I think that I just I do my best I don't sit here and stress about it I used to be very like over the top anxious about my house being clean and organized because like what if somebody comes over um I you know being a single mom I felt like I was constantly being like judged and just like people would say things and I, it's just like, I don't know. Um, and so I was constantly anxious about my house being clean and I would get really frustrated and upset and angry when it would get dirty. I, I my heart was not right. And, um, I, I didn't want to be the mom. I didn't want to be the angry yelling mom. I didn't want to be the mom who like cleaned something and then d the kids couldn't use it or play with it or go there. Or like the kitchen's now closed for the next 20, 30 minutes because I just mopped. Like whatever it is. I, I just, I didn't want to be that person anymore. Um, and so I do my best. Um, I give myself grace. And if things get messy, then so be it because we're living here. Like there is a lot of people in this house. It's going to get messy and you just do your best to clean it up. Um, and I think that's like, I, I, again, strategic, right? Like I'm strategic about doing it and making sure I'm fitting these things in and like making time to like dust and get the cobwebs and, and whatever, like room by room. I don't try to, I take bite sized pieces. Um, and I, you're never going to come to my house and everything be perfectly clean and organized. There's, there's probably going to be at least one room somewhere, uh, that is not up to par and I'm okay with that. Um, because I'm more worried about the people in the home than how clean and organized the home is. And not to say that I don't do it, like it gets done. Um, but it, I, I just let go of that, like standard of perfection, probably like three kids ago, four kids ago, because it just wasn't, it wasn't beneficial to my spirit and my like loving others. If that, like, I hope that makes sense. Okay, and then this one I get a lot is like, how do you balance, this is number seven, how do you balance being a mom and having personal time? And I think this goes into the category of like self-care. Um, and again, scheduling it in, making sure that I'm strategic about it. But I'm not somebody like I used to be like, 
oh, I just want the kids to go to school so I can have like me time and I want to like go do those things. But as the years have gone on and I feel like I've just been more sanctified and um, really understanding and nurturing my role as mom, wife and homemaker, I realized I don't actually want to spend like if I'm being strategic and investing in my people in my home, I actually don't really want to be away from it. I actually really enjoy being home and I enjoy my family and hanging out with them and spending time not to say that I don't do things so I will it's just kind of like it's never sporadic so if like let's say a friend is having a birthday party and we're doing like a dinner out on the town I just have to make sure that I'm planning accordingly so like hey babe uh so-and-so's birthday is this friday it's about a week away um do you think that's something like we don't have anything going on i was gonna go is that okay could you know do, is does that conflict with anything you have going on no okay cool i'll make sure that like dinner is ready to go um make it easy for him so it's not like st extra stressful because it's not his realm of things like he can do it. Um, I just make it easier for him. So it's just one less thing he has to worry about because that's what I would want somebody to do for me. Um, and just kind of give him like a rundown of like what should be done, what I expect to be done, whatever, because it helps make sure that we're both on the same page. Or um, if like, so my daughter, my oldest daughter and I, her birthday is going to be, she's going to be 17 and she wants to do a big trip. And so we're going to Florida for her birthday um, for a week, just her and I, and one of her friends, but like, I'm going to be going away from my family and home for like a week. And that's a lot. And so there's some planning and prep preparation to be done to do that. But I'm still able to like go. It's not like I can't go. Um, other things that I do for like my personal time is like my Bible time. That's a part of my self-care. That's a part of my like personal time. And I wake up early in the morning so that I can have that in the quietness and then drinking my coffee. Like that is my personal time. Um, before I go to bed, I'll read. That's another thing that I do for like personal time. While I'm cleaning, I listen to podcasts or audio books or I'll watch like YouTube videos. Um, I like to crochet um, and, and I usually use that on the weekends like on our slower days. Um, we have like a day of rest um, and so I'll kind of do that or at the end of the day if we're watching TV together or like a movie or something together then I will sit there and work on it and those things like I love doing those things. I love to create things um, and so I kind of just like multitask it which it's it's like I'm still getting it done. I'm still able to like enjoy the thing that I'm doing. I just have to be either strategic about it, prepping for it, or multitasking with it. This one I actually really love. What are your favorite activ activities to do with your kids? And there's a lot of things that I really enjoy with to do with my kids. Like um, they are very creative people too. Um, they like to make things in color and um, clay and like all of those things so we get to do a lot like in homeschool we get to do a lot of those things together um I think honestly because I I wouldn't say I like struggled through school but there were certain subjects like history was one of them that I struggled through and so doing this alongside them and learning alongside them and and having these activities it's just so much fun I'm able to learn a lot being hands-on and like teaching them um so that's really fun for me it's something that I've really grown to enjoy I was not somebody who ever wanted to homeschool um it was kind of just like I I felt like I was getting poked and prodded into doing it um and not by like anybody but I felt like it was a very like god uh, provoked thing there was just things that there was certain things that kept on happening that kind of like pushed me into that realm of thinking it through and stuff and so I was really reluctant to homeschool in the beginning but it's now something that I really actually enjoy like it's one of my favorite things that I get to do with the kids we love having family movie nights family game nights is another big one um like seen it Disney seen it <laughs> we, that's really fun for us um it's like it's from the 90s like it's an old old one but it's fun um some other games, Apples to Apples is a fun one for us. Um, Monopoly is the one that we like, but it's like, you don't know what you're going to get. And it's a time um, investment. Um, but what we also like play the Switch. So we have like a lot of the Mario games. Um, and so like Mario Kart, that kind of stuff. That's really fun for us to just like 
anything that like involves snacks and games or like entertainment, like movies, games, um, like going on a car ride. Like one time we went through the nativity. What we, <laughs> what we did was we got some pizzas. Like I think it was like Pizza Hut or something. We just got a couple pizzas, some paper plates, some drinks, and we went and drove through because it's like an interactive nativity scene that you get to like drive through and they give you hot chocolate and stuff. But it was just like fun. Like we're just eating and enjoying this. And so I think those things are really fun. Um, right now it's winter, so of course I'm thinking of all like the the cozier um like doing puzzles together and stuff but during the summer like going hiking going on to the lake going on like going to the park going to the pool like there's all these things like I just like to be with them and there's like anything that's like creative with snacks and f like f something fun like we're down for it and so <laughs> like I don't know if there's anything that I like don't like doing with the kids um, because I have, like, my kids are, like, stretched out, so I have, like, little bitties, and then I have big ones, and, like, um, they're fun, like, I don't, I just like to do things with the families, I think, just think of an activity that you really like to do, and invite them in to do it, like, you like painting, like, have them paint with you, you want to learn some, you know, you how to do pottery, like take them with you. And if they're too little, then there's a way to do it. But like use Play-Doh instead of clay or something, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, I think that as you spend time with them, and as you're doing these activities, you will see like the kids just want to spend time with you. And they're down pretty much probably to do whatever. And so just like, start with something that you like to do if you like cooking or you like baking like just have them come into the kitchen with you if you like going for walks or hikes take them with you like bring a stroller bring a backpack whatever like plan accordingly because they're probably like it's make it like a scavenger hunt make it fun for them to where it's like oh I want to go on a hike because this is good for me for exercise I like to see my scenery but I'm also entertaining them because they're looking for like a squirrel in a tree or a pine cone or a flower or you know rock, whatever like they're out looking for something so it's more entertaining okay and then the last question number 10 is what advice would I give to new moms and I actually have a video if you're interested in checking it out you can look here in the cards or um the screen somewhere here it'll show you like the advice for moms I think that the I don't know what my like top what are my top five I think my top five is Trust your instincts, and if you don't trust your instincts, then ask somebody who you do trust. I would say take everything with a grain of salt because there is something about us. Okay, I will say, for those of you who are like, I don't like unsolicited advice, like I don't care, I don't want to hear it. But I think the heart between, like, and I, I've really worked on this because I've realized as being a mom and like having relationships with other moms, you hear this a lot. And so I've tried to like, if you ask me, I will tell you. If you do not ask me, I'm not telling you kind of a thing. Cause I don't want to like frustrate you or pressure you or whatever. And, but I think that the heart behind the unsolicited advice, the moms that are trying to help is because we have had to figure it out the hard way. There's a lot of like tears and heartbreak and frustration and sleepless nights that have gone into all of these things and we are just trying to pass on the knowledge that we learned the problem is we are different people than you we have different children than you and so I would say you can take these things that you're hearing or that you're picking up from books um articles, magazines, doctors, friends, moms, aunts, like wherever you're hearing it, I would just say kind of take it collectively, do some research, talk to your uh, spouse, talk to your husband, figure out like what it is that you want to do, kind of like have your tried and true people, like women, moms, that you talk to, to kind of like, um, what is it called? To kind of like work through it. Um, and try to figure out the problems. I think that is really helpful. Like, for instance, if your baby has a dairy allergy, go find another mom who has a baby with a dairy allergy because they're going to probably be more helpful and resourceful than somebody who doesn't have a kid with a dairy allergy or, like, yeah. I don't want to get into what I was going to say. Anyways, um... I, so that would be trust your instinct and if you don't trust your instinct or you're not sure or you're just like 
uneasy, it's not working, then I would say talk to somebody that you trust. I would say also um, the whole idea of like when the baby's sleeping, go wash your dishes or like I feel like there's there's two pieces of me that's like when your baby's sleeping, you should sleep. Absolutely. I 1000% believe that you will be more productive as much as I know those dishes are on your mind or doing X, Y, Z is on your mind. I promise you getting some sleep, some much needed, desperate, like just get your sleep. Sleep when the baby is sleeping. I'm, I promise you that's probably like the best thing you can do. Um, and if you really, really can't, then, you know, go do the thing. But I would say just try to sleep as much as you can. Sleeping when the baby sleeps is the best thing you could possibly do, the most productive thing you can do. Because when you go days without sleep, because you're trying to do all these other things and you're not resting, you will put yourself into such a miserable, emotionally, mentally, just dark place. And I say this from experience, like I am one of those people, I just dealt with it with number seven, with baby number seven, had him, and I just felt like there was all of these things other uh, that I needed to do, responsibilities that I needed to do. And so I needed to do them. I also felt a lot better since having the baby. So I wanted to do them. And then it would come time to when I was really, really tired and I couldn't sleep because he would need to eat. He would need to do whatever. He was really fussy. He needed um, extra help and attention. And like my husband works like he, uh, as much as he would want to help and, and do nights and stuff like that, like I stay here. Like, I can take a nap when the baby's nap, with a little snap and stuff. Like, I have more freedom in my schedule than he does. And so, get the sleep when you can get the sleep. And don't be afraid to ask people for help. If you're in a situation where you don't have family and stuff like that, then figure out maybe, um, like, a church, a friend group, reach out to somebody because I'm telling you people like moms especially like we know that pain we know that struggle and it, like we're happy to help like I am literally if I know you and you need a meal if you need me to come wash your dishes I will do your laundry like whatever it is like if you cannot sleep because you can't stop thinking about your laundry pile I will come help you with your laundry pile I'll take it home with me if you want so it's quiet so I think those are my top three things don't be afraid to ask for help. Reach out. Sleep when you can and trust your instincts. And if you, if not, if you're really worried about it, then find a few a few people, a few moms that you trust and like the, like look at the way they parent and if that's what that's what you like, that's what you want to like emulate, then reach out to them. And so I think those are my three tips. I hope that, that you enjoyed the answers to these questions. I hope I answered your question. If I didn't, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like this video. And if you're looking for some more motherhood content, don't be afraid to check out my playlist here and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for joining me for the Q&A and I'll see you later. Bye.